Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at uh, taking paragraphs and turning them into equations. Specifically, we're working with linear systems, and so we have an advantage. We know that each of these paragraphs is going to create a linear system. In order to have a linear system, we need two linear equations expressed with two variables. So, anytime you see a linear systems problem, the first thing you need to do is find out what are the things that are being looked for. What are the variables, in other words? And uh, you almost always find them in the last sentence of the paragraph. So in the first problem, um, we had uh, um, combining a pizza with two burritos and finding the calorie count, and we're f combining two burritos with a pizza and finding its calorie count, and that should be enough information to find the calories per burrito and the calories per pizza. So here's what I learned. Since they want to know the calorie count of each, they're actually looking for a rate, calories per burrito and calories per pizza. Given information was, if we take one pizza times the number of calories in a pizza, and we take two burritos times the number of calories in a burrito, that's going to add up to a total of 1,980 calories. So once again, pizza was constant, it's fixed. P calories was unknown, variable. Two burritos, fixed. B calories, unknown. Total calories for combined, 1,980, that's fixed. Similarly, oh sorry, before I do that, yeah, we could see here then um, that the burrito technically cancels with burrito and we're left with calories and here we're also pizza times you know divided by pizza is leaving us with calories as well so here we have 1p calories plus 2b calories equals 1980 calories it's the calories that have to all add up together and that works with dimensional analysis two pizzas times p calories per pizza added to one burrito times the amount of calories in a burrito is going to give us 2,670 calories. So once again, we have calories, calories, calories. All the units or labels match up, and that simplifies into this system. So now, take all this paragraph and turn it into this system. Now I can use computer technology or any system method, solution method that I have at my disposal. So prior to being able to write this as an equation, all you have is guess and check. But now that we have this system, we can go straight to the answer we're looking for. In the second problem, we have a, a rectangular plot whose uh, um, three sides are going to be fenced in, the other side's alongside a house. And uh, so we have two things at work here. We have the dimensions, which is what we're looking for, and we have the cost of fencing. So when I read the paragraph, I understand that uh, what I'm looking for is the length and the width, so that's immediately labeled in, um, in my problem. And I even draw the rectangle. And then there's a statement made about perimeter, so I try to write an equation with perimeter in it. And keeping in mind that L and W represent feet, we have 2 times the feet of length, there's this many and that many, so 2L two, two total feet and 2W feet for a total of 360 feet. So that's taking the perimeter sentence and turning it into a mathematical equation. Twice the length of uh, the rectangle plus twice the width of the rectangle gives us the total distance around the rectangle. Feet plus feet equal feet, so we're good. Now the rest of the paragraph is talking about cost. Specifically, it costs $3,280 to fence an expensive fence along the length and the two inexpensive lengths along the width of the fence. So, I have to now think about rates, because this is $20 per foot, and then we have times the length in feet is going to give us dollars. We have eight dollars per foot times feet is going to give us dollars as well. So all we have to do is write the correct equation, which shows that L feet times twenty dollars per foot, two W feet plus eight dollars per foot is going to give us a grand total of three thousand two hundred eighty. Now keep in mind we're only fencing one side of the expensive side, so that's one L. We're fencing in two of the W's at $8 per foot. So 2 times W times 8 is 16 W. So if I cancel out all the feet and I just get dollars plus dollars equal dollars, and then I can actually reduce that equation to get smaller numbers to, give, to generate this system right here. So once again, paragraph, define variables, use the paragraph to write at least two equations, and simplify for a system that you can solve. Things can get a little challenging with linear systems problems, but if you keep the labels in mind and you understand what you know and what's fixed and what it is that you're looking for and what's variable, you should be able to keep this stuff straight. Now in this case, the question that was being asked was how many cashews should they add to the mixture? 
but they, it's really kind of difficult in this case to see what the other variable is supposed to be. But what they said was, um, we want the revenue to be the same as if, as if we sold the stuff separately. So what's, the other thing that's going to change besides the pounds of cashews added to the mixture will be the revenue that's created from that mixture or from selling separately. So revenue represents the other unknown that's changeable in this context. Now, to write an equation, what we have to do is really understand that there's already peanuts. There's going to be 30 pounds of peanuts already there. So if we sell together, we're going to have 30 pounds of peanuts and C pounds of cashews. So this is going to be the weight of the new mixture, 30 plus C pounds. Now, what I'm given is a rate. The rate of change is $3 per pound. $3 per pound. So if I multiply $3 per pound times the total poundage, I will have the cost of the cashew mixture, which is revenue. So one way that I can make money by selling peanuts and cashews would be to add some cashews to 30 pounds of peanuts, charge $3 a pound, and that will give me money. Or I could sell separately. Sorry, I'm just going to reduce that equation. Or I could sell separately. If I sold separately, then I'm going to sell 30 pounds of peanuts at $1.50 a pound, and I'm going to sell, I don't know, C pounds of cashews. I don't know how much, but I'm selling those at $5 a pound, and that will give me my revenue sold separately. So we have an equation for sold separately, and we have an equation for sold together, both giving us revenue, both dependent on the amount of pounds of cashews that we have. See, at this point, we can guess and check. See, if I could uh, say 10 pounds, that would be $50 plus $45 giving us a total of $95 if we sold it separately. Here we could put in, uh, once again, 10 pounds plus 30 pounds is 40 pounds. 40 times 3 is $120. So we'd be actually paying more if we added 10 pounds of cashews to this mixture. Anyway, r simplifying this and getting rid of all the labels, once again, notice pounds divide out and we're left with dollars, so $45 plus 5C dollars equals revenue dollars for sold separately. So separate or se sold separately, sold as a combination, creates a total system. All right, and the last problem, or no, the last problem on this page, or this slide anyway, um, we've got two different things that we have as variable here, or unknowns, let's just say unknowns rather than variables. We have the wind speed, which is the question, that's what we're trying to find. But then we actually have the rate of the plane, we already know that one, and we, all know how, we also know the time that it took for the plane to fly against the wind and with the wind. So here's what I know. Distance is unknown, and so is the wind speed. I also know, because there's so much information about speeds and distances and times, that I'm going to engage distance equals rate times time, or y equals mx. It's the same concept. Your rate times your quantity equals your outcome. So here, um, what we're going to do is recognize that we're going to travel d miles, d miles distance will be the rate of the plane with the wind and it will take two hours for that to happen so we can travel d miles at 150 plus w times two hours that'll be the distance that we travel now the rate against the wind we're going to subtract the wind to create the total speed of the plane so in this case we have 150 miles per hour minus the wind speed is going to be our new rate of change and if we did that, it will take us three hours to complete the same D miles. Simplify this, it becomes a nice and easy system. It looks like this. So once again, I don't think I would have been able to write this system had I not been paying attention to my labels. Because when I was paying attention to miles per hour and hours and miles, I knew I had to use distance equals rate times time. What makes this problem a little bit more challenging for some students is not knowing that if you add wind speed to plane speed, you get the overall speed of the plane with the wind. If you subtract wind speed from plane speed, you get the overall speed of the plane against the wind. So this is faster, this is slower, which is why we can go a faster speed, cover the same distance in less time. Slower speed, same distance, takes longer. Anyway, nice and easy system to solve. Once you get the equations written, the rest of this should be pretty elementary. I'll go through the rest of these rather quickly. Um, number five, uh, we're looking for the price of a hot dog and the price of a soda. And so those are rates, dollars per hot dog, dollars per soda. And if I take 10 hot dogs times D dollars per hot dog, add that to 5 sodas times S dollars per soda, um, it's going to cost me 12.50. 
getting rid of the labels, cleaning it all up, and simplifying, I get a nice, easy equation. 2D plus S equals $2.50. 7 hot dogs times D dollars per hot dog is going to give me the price of hot dogs. 4 times S dollars per soda is going to cost me $9 total. And there's my linear system. The restaurant manager problem we did in class, um, there's already notes on that one. So we move on to number 7. Um, and this one, again, we're talking about wind speed, but this time we don't know the speed of the plane or the speed of the wind, but we do know the distance, so that changes the nature of the problem. And this is how I wrote my first equation. I looked at the sentence and it said P miles per hour, so that's the wind speed plus the plane speed. So if I take the wind speed, add it to the plane speed, it's going to give it my overall speed. But they didn't tell me the speed, they told me 600 miles over 3 hours. Which if you looked at 600 miles over 3 hours, that's 200 miles per hour. So that simplifies this equation. Now P miles per hour less the wind speed is going to require that we do 600 miles in 4 hours, so in a total of 150 miles per hour. Now with this particular system, it's actually easy enough to solve. The plane's going 175 and the wind is 25 miles an hour. So 175 plus 25 is 200, 175 less 25 is 150. So this is actually way easier to solve than it is to write. But if you learn how to write using dimensional analysis, it's going to make it a lot more confident in the quality of the work that you're doing. Um, number eight, movie theater charges $9 for adults. And so A is the number of adults because it said how many adults were there. And how many were seniors? So S would be the number of seniors. And then, if A adults and S seniors went to the show, there were 325 people. So it says on a day when 325 people attended, that means we have to add the A and the S, and that gives us the total number of people. $9 per adult times A adults gives us dollars. $7 per senior times the number of seniors gives us uh, dollars, and that's a total of $2,495. And there again is our linear system. I hope you find this helpful. I know it's long, and I'm sure you have to pause this a few times to catch it. But please pay attention to your labels and your rates and dimensional analysis, and it'll make this a lot easier to do uh, over time. But you have to get over the hump first. Have a great day.